Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're looking at this ink. This is brought to us by uh, our friends over at Pen Chalet, Ron and Braden. Thanks very much, Ron and Braden, for sending this out for my review. Uh, this is obviously a Colorverse ink, and this one is called Tango. And this is made with a um, as one of the collaborations that Colorverse has been doing with various brands and such. And this is a collaboration with the Opus 88 uh, Coloro Red, which you can see there represented. Yeah, it's a nice looking label. They did a good job. Uh, this ink is going to be kind of a reddish orange, so kind of like this color, really, of the pen. Uh, the pens themselves, uh, I have actually only used one once, and it seemed fine. Um, and they go for uh, 93 bucks on the, the Pen Gelé site right now. Uh, and the ink, this is um, one of these two ink bottles. I'm going to look inside. Um, got a little reminder here, got this from Pen Chalet, because otherwise I'll forget things. Uh, it's got a cool, like, space theme inside, just like the, uh, the, uh, Leica and all those others that we did recently. A little space taxi. And got these guys. This is the, uh, Opus 88 Coloro Collection. And look at all these things. Adobe, Depth, uh, Laurel, the Tango, Supernatural, Girls Just Wanna. And look at all these things. Well, that's, oh, these are for the, the, these are for the picnics, and this is for the demo. And these are for Coloros. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, this ink, which has stickers and all this kind of jazz. Look at all the stuff you get packed in here. Um, this ink is 33 bucks for the set. Uh, and the set is a big bottle and a little bottle. The big bottle is 65 mils, and the little one is 15. Um, I'm still honestly not sure why they do this with the same ink in, in both bottles. I guess you can like keep the big one for yourself and give the small one to a friend or something. Uh, maybe it's a travel bottle. I don't know. It seems to work pretty well with most of the pens I've tried filling from it. Uh, although when they get really low, like this, uh, this one's down to about here. Uh, it gets pretty difficult to fill and you end up trying to having to syringe fill the thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's the way it goes and you get low on ink, I guess. So this little 15 mil bottle is cute uh, and a good gift, I suppose. But otherwise, when they're the same, you know, the same inks in both bottles, I'm not really sure why they do that. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, these are fun bottles. If you haven't seen these before. They're these like sort of teardrop shaped bottles um, and they work really well. It's a good bottle, uh, good cap and everything. And they got a nice seal. Uh, good wide opening. Yeah, no complaints there. Uh, the packaging on these is really nice. Uh, they upgraded this packaging, so it's like a lot of foam in here holding these things in. Oh, we got a we got a spaceship there, and actually underneath there is like a little Darth Vader uh, underneath there if you take this whole thing apart, which is kind of a fun little surprise. I like that there are things to find. All right, so let's put this guy back together, put him away, and then look at the ink. All right. Cool, that's it. Okay, uh, so this is what the ink looks like here. Zoom in. And uh, as you can see, it is sort of an orangey red. I thought this was gonna be a straight up orange, but it's got a lot of sort of red tones into it, uh, especially when it dries. It seems like it darkens a little bit as it dries. So you end up with more of a, a reddish orange than a regular orange. And uh, when we look at the color samples and uh, comparisons here in a little bit, uh, I will show you the difference between those kinds of things. So um, we have this in two pins right now. The first of which is this uh, green Franklin Kristoff Model 20. And this one is sporting a broad sig nib and you can see that uh, writing sample right here uh, you can definitely see the uh, you know the difference in the uh, the line widths and sort that sort of thing but it's not as wet in this nib as it is in the next one which is this diplomat arrow this is the factory finish and this has a medium nib in it and it's a pretty darn wet medium nib and so when you look at it here you'll see that this one looks more orange than the franklin Kristoff, and then the diplomat looks much redder because it's just putting down a lot more ink uh, which is interesting since we have a broad nib up here that's been uh, sigged um, and uh, this one's just a regular old factory medium but these factory mediums are pretty great so you know i'm not gonna I'm not gonna downplay that greatness uh, but you definitely get a you know, different character from this ink depending on the line weight. So there you go. Um, as for 20 pound performance, we have some real minor bleeding from this one, which is pretty typical with Colorverse inks on this kind of bad paper. But no real um, problems aside from a tiny bit of bleed. As you're looking here, you're not going to really see any, uh, any feathers or anything like that. Um... I thought I saw some over here. I think it was just a trick of my, trick of my eyeballs. This is the... Uh, uh, the back side of that sample, let me put it on the, the wood here. And uh, you can see down here with the arrow sample, you uh, definitely get a little bit more bleed, but as I said, it's a much wetter nib. Up here with the, the broad sig, 
very, very minimal. You get a couple of dots here and there, but uh, this paper is pretty spotty quality anyway, so I'm not uh, I'm not shocked by that at all. So there you go, pretty good performance, especially for a color verse, which tends to bleed through this stuff more. Uh, I think it uh, I think it performed pretty well in here for that. So um, that's that. Um, let's go ahead and look at it on a couple of other papers, I guess. So this one is the uh, the Rhodia number 16 pad that I always use for these reviews, and uh, it works great on here, of course. No complaints at all. You get some very mild shading but this is a fairly saturated ink and so um, you only really see the shading kind of down here uh, you don't see a whole lot of it from the sig the the sig just gives you a nice nice even coverage but this one you see some lighter areas and some darker areas where the ink pools and all that kind of thing so a little bit of shading but not a ton uh, no sheen, nothing like that. It seems like it dries fairly quickly. Um, I have up here that the flow is kind of like medium dry maybe, but I think it's really just more like medium. It's, uh, it's pretty well controlled. Uh, I just went medium dry because it was feeling a little bit dry on this nib for some reason. Uh, and I don't remember this nib being uh, dry broad, but uh, it seems like maybe it is just a touch. So medium, medium dry, maybe, but uh, works really well on both these nibs. So I would say use with confidence. Uh, let's see. This is a currently inked Inky Fingers book. This is made with that wheat straw paper. And on here, <laughs> binding has come loose. Uh, this is the last two inks in here, actually. So I have it up here uh, with the Diplomat Arrow and down here at the bottom with the... Uh the Franklin Kristoff, and you can see again that it's much darker here and has a more reddish cast uh, than the uh, uh, the color down here, but still a very nice rich color. This is a great, uh, great ink, I think. And then in here, which is an ink journal, this is Tomoe River Ink Journal, you have, uh, here's the page, right there. So, again, a little bit darker with the uh, the arrow, you can see that especially here in the writing bit, not so much in the, the scribble. Seems pretty comparable there, but in the writing bit, it seems definitely a bit darker from the arrow. But that's uh, that's good. That seems means it's holding holding strong across all these. Did I get a little sheen off there? Nah, just a reflection of the light. No real sheen here. So don't look for this one to be a sheener. If you don't like sheen, this is a good ink for you. All right, let's go ahead and do the water test, take a look at the chromatography, and then look at some ink comparisons and uh, bounce out of here. What do you think about that? Here we go. Have this action, let's get it on the words because that's fun. Yeah, let me find a clean corner. Here's one. Let's go ahead and mop that up. Not sure exactly what to expect here. I think most of it's going to come off, but yeah, not too bad actually. It seems like seems like it's okay. I mean, if you let that soak for a long time, I was talking to a dude earlier uh, this week who tests out inks by just leaving them underwater for days at a time. Uh, I'm not trying to simulate that. I don't think this would survive very well that way. Uh, but you do, uh, you can still read it. So that's cool. It's actually kind of heartening. I wasn't expecting that. This is what the chromatography looks like. Right there. And as you can see, you got some nice, uh, nice pink tones down here, red stuff in the middle, and then oranges right at the top. This is like uh, some fall leaf action or something. So if you're a leaf peeper, get that tango. <laughs> Uh, now let's look at look at it next to some other inks that are in the same kind of range. So uh, this is Colorverse Tango. Whoops, sorry, <laughs> got it upside down. Uh, this is Colorverse Tango right here. Uh, let's see what's closest. Probably the closest are going to be the Kayo Iro Moonlight of Higashiyama, which is a little bit on the dry side because it's one of these Kayo Iros, but it's not that bad. It's pretty darn nice ink. And then here, Cult Pen's Deep Dark Orange, which is super gorgeous. I gotta try this one soon. I've I got this from my buddy Eleanor, and uh, she gave me a really nice sample of it, so I gotta gotta use that soon. But um, the Tango is kind of more red than either of these. These both are very dark oranges that lean almost brown, uh, especially Moonlight. Um, Deep Dark Orange is a very very dark orange, like a super dark pumpkin. Whereas this one has a little bit more red, as you can probably see there. It's got the, you can see, see those like scarlet tones coming out. Uh, let's see what else have we got here that's close. We have some Diamine Blood Orange. Those deep dark or uh, deep dark oranges and that sort of thing from Cult Pens. I believe those are also Diamine. Um, so this is a pretty close comparison. Let's see how these two look together. Yeah, very very different actually. Uh, so there's Blood Orange. And let's put another uh, one that's named after an orange there. We've got the Monteverde Mandarin Orange, which is like gorgeous orange. Monteverde, man, such good inks. Um, so you've got, uh, this is a much more pure orange, although it's kind of on the darker side. This one has got a whole lot of red mixed in and some sheen. 
Uh, I think you can probably see a little bit of that there. Uh, whereas the Tango, while it might look red on its own, you put it next to something that's like a red-orange, and it's very clearly different. So there you go. And now a couple of, uh, well, here's one that's sort of a more brownish-orange. Uh, it's Omna from Califolio is a very uh, brownish, yellowish sort of orange. So while this one leans red, this one leans yellow. There's a lot of different things in the orange color space. And now a couple for something completely different. Um, here is Sailor Gentle Ken Mokasai, which is like they're um, totally blanking on the darn thing. Anyway, a beautiful orange that I can't remember the name of, and I'm sure I'll remember it when I'm editing. Uh, and then next to that, my favorite orange right now is Diamine Pumpkin. And that's because while the Kin Mokasai is very cool, apricot, that's what it was, apricot. Sailor Gentle apricot and Kin Mokasai are almost identical. Very, very, very close. Maybe actually identical. Um, while this one is a brighter, sort of lighter shade of orange, and the Colorverse Tango leans red, Diamine Pumpkin is just a blazing, in-your-face, awesome orange. So if you're looking for a seasonal orange right now for the you know post-Halloween, Thanksgiving, pre-Christmas area, Diamine Pumpkin is great and also cost effective. So go check that out somewhere. Okay, so that's been a whole bunch of different inks next to it. Um, it's definitely one of those uh, not just like an off orange, uh, but certainly worth checking out. And uh, there you go. So uh, thanks again to Pen Chalet, to Braden and Ron for sending this out for review. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this and you'll go and find yourself some sweet orange inks. Uh, I am a big fan of orange ink and uh, I think these are some pretty good ones. So um, I will see y'all later. Peace out.